Hey, what's up everybody? Richard Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review this mini PC that I just got off of Amazon. So this right here is the Minis Forum Elite Mini UM780 XTX Mini PC. Now this has some amazing specs on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fully unbox this. We're gonna take a look at the layout and design of this mini PC and also do an extensive performance test with a bunch of different games and emulators to see exactly where that performance lines up. But let's dive into the specs of this so we can see exactly what's going on here internally. So this mini PC right here offers an AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS processor, which has a clock speed of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of up to 5.1 gigahertz. We've got AMD Radeon 780M graphics. We also have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. We also have a one terabyte SSD installed within running Windows 11 Home, in addition to four different video outputs on here. So we can use HDMI, we can use DisplayPort, we can also use two separate USB 4 ports on here. So that is an awesome feature on here that I have yet to see on any other mini PCs, but let's unbox this and get started checking out what this really has to offer. All right, very nice packaging so far. Here's our mini PC, we'll set that aside. Let's see what else is included in here. All right, so we do have a mount for this. So we can mount this to a, the backside of a monitor, um, backside of a desk or you know the inside of an arcade cabinet if we want to use this to mod an arcade one up or just an arcade cabinet in general. So that definitely comes in handy. We have the screws necessary to make that connection. We also have another mount right here, which is pretty cool. Just a different way of actually using that or incorporating that into the existing mount. We also have our stand, which I'm going to go ahead and set up as well because I love the way that this looks and you guys have already seen the picture there. So here we have our power supply cable. It's actually a two part power supply cable right here. This part connects to this part and we have an HDMI. This is a regular HDMI cable right here. Now we also have our user manual, which I'm going to thumb through here really quickly. So it does walk through all the ports on here, different functions and features, interfaces, how to set this up as well is very thorough. And it walks through also what the um, contents are in this package. Uh, we also have what looks like a adapter. Um, oh, sweet. This is an M2 to OcuLink adapter right here. So that's pretty cool to have. I've actually never seen one of these included on a mini PC before. So that can come in handy to the right person. We also have some of these uh, little tip cards here. And this right here is just a warning that we do not recommend customers to remove the CPU cooler themselves. So just some warnings here. And then we also have the cool Tiger graphic that I think we all probably noticed on the um, stock photos of this. So we do have that right here. So you could actually put this on if you wanted to. It does look pretty sharp there and it is translucent. So it'll pick up on you know the backside of this and look pretty sharp on there. So that's optional. You don't have to put that on there, but it does look pretty cool. Go ahead and open this up and take a closer look at the actual mini PC. All right, guys, here is the mini PC up close and personal. You can see we have exceptional airflow on the sides, which I love that. That's going to keep this nice and cool also on the backside as well. But let's comb through some of the ports here. So first and foremost, very sleek design here. You can definitely see where you might want to put that tiger uh, sort of graphic on here to kind of spice it up because it is pretty plain, but that doesn't bother me for the most part. I'm not going to be staring at my mini PC all that much anyways, but very sleek design. This is 100% metal. This is not a cheap plastic mini PC, good amount of weight to this, but considering the fact that it is all metal, it is still very much lightweight all things considered. So over here we have a little reset button. We also have our audio port right next to that. Next to that we have a USB 4 port, which is awesome to see that those are being integrated into mini PCs these days. And we've definitely been seeing a lot more of that lately. We have two USB 3 ports right next to that. And we also have our power button easily located on the front. I say this all the time when reviewing mini PCs and especially when it comes down to their layout and design. I love having all of these options here in the front. A lot of times they do get tucked into the backside. I like these as a gamer because these are what I want to, you know, just have readily available access to for controllers, for, um, you know, micro SD card readers or flash drives. If I'm bringing ROMs into a gaming setup, 
it's just very convenient to have access to all of those right in the front rather than having to physically turn this around. But as we do turn this around, you can see we have a lot of additional ports right back here as well. So we have two additional USB 3 ports, display port, another USB 4 port here, HDMI port, and then right here, which is capped, is where your OcuLink is going to go if you decide to actually use that. So we know because it's still right over here in the package that it has not been installed within. So you don't have to use this. If you're not somebody that's going to take advantage of the OcuLink option, then you just leave it capped off like this. I'm probably not going to bother with that today because there's just tons of other options on here. There's just really no reason for me personally to use it. It's not something that I'm, you know, accustomed to bringing into the mix, but, um, you know, certainly is a great option, again, for the right person that wants to utilize that. And you can see, you can put this in here, be easier with two hands, but um, there we go, it's sitting in there, but I'll leave it out for right now. Two Ethernet ports right next to that, and then right here is our uh, 19 volt power supply connection. So all we have to do there is grab our power supply cable, connect that over just like so, and we are good to go. But tons and tons of video output options on here, which is definitely cool. If you're somebody that is streaming or you're somebody that is doing a lot of editing, I could see fully utilizing all of those video outputs on here uh, very nicely. So love the unique design here, love what we're seeing in terms of airflow. So I definitely wanna check out how the cooling is on this, but I'm definitely thinking this is going to be a good experience. And if we ever wanted to open this up, actually you can see on the back where those mounts would be, but if you ever wanted to open this up, all you have to do is just go in here and remove the non-skid uh, feet on the back here. You do need like a little tool or like tweezers to, to kind of peel this up, but you could easily do that. Of course, I have like no fingernails at all, but if we did, there we go. You can see under each one, we have a little screw hole. So just go ahead, remove this, take those screws out, open it up, but just like that, they sit right back on there. So let's actually fire this up and see what this has to offer here and what the performance is like gaming on this because that's what we're most concerned with here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel.
the end of lap one, it's Anakin Skywalker in the lead. You win round two. Fight. <laughs> You win. Not fifty. to trouble. Climbing up the turnbuckles. Oh, what's gonna happen now? on the quarry.
accept. We do not bow. That hologram. It's Atriox. He led the attack on the Infinity. He was looking for something. He... He killed everyone. I know. We met. Impossible. Your eyes deceive you, brother. All right, guys, we just did a full performance test on this Elite Mini from Mini's Forum. Now, I have to say, this is not just a phenomenal mini PC. This is quite possibly, and I believe it to be, the best mini PC that I've ever reviewed here on the channel. And I've reviewed a lot of mini PCs. There's a lot of options out there, and there's a lot of great options out there. But this one, in my opinion, is the absolute best. And I'm going to explain to you guys why. I jumped into a wide range of games here today to test out. We first went into Botticera. We tested out a wide range of retro games and game collections. So I started with N64, kicked it up to GameCube, Wii U, PS2, and then most importantly, PS3, which is the most challenging in my opinion. We've had a lot of setbacks with other mini PCs in terms of PS3 emulation and what can be handled effectively on mini PCs. Now, everything that I threw at this mini PC performed without a hitch on Botticera. We had no issues with PS3. That's not to say that every PS3 game is going to emulate effectively on this mini PC, but it's not, you know, because of any sort of limitations with the mini PC itself. The emulator has not been around for a huge amount of time. It's still making advancements. It's definitely making serious progress, but not every game is going to be emulated, you know, 100% perfect. Again, that is due to the emulator, not due to the mini PC here. And we also jumped into AAA titles. We jumped into a wide range of AAA titles, and I had no issues there either. Everything performed without a hitch with AAA titles. So this is definitely an absolute powerhouse of a mini PC. So let's talk a little bit more about what I also love about this. I love the fact that we have this stand here. You don't have to use the stand, but it's awesome to have that option. We can also mount this, you know, with the regular mount as well. So that's, a, you know, key options here that I think really are exceptional. But the airflow on here and cooling is out of this world. I actually gamed on here today for four and a half hours. Very rare that I actually spend that much time on a mini PC that I'm reviewing, but it's even more rare that we have the performance that we got out of this. So I got lost in gaming today, especially with PS3 because it was such a good experience. So how does this compare to some of the other options out there? Well, up until this point, my favorite mini PC has been the B-Link Sur 7. I think that the performance on there is exceptional. The B-Link Sur 6 Max was also pretty good too but the B-Link Sur 7 was definitely a step above. Now, how does this compare to that? Well, it doesn't just rival it. It 100% lines up perfectly with the B-Link Sur 7. It has the exact same processor, the exact same RAM, the exact same graphics. Literally, it is the exact same thing internally. However, I think that the cooling is better on here, the design is better, and the port offerings here are much better. So the B-Link Sur 7 is a great mini PC, don't get me wrong, but this has more options in terms of USB ports. So we have two USB 3 ports in the front. In addition to a USB 4 port, we still have obviously the power button. We have the audio um, cable connection in the front as well. If we flip it around to the back, we have two Ethernet ports here. I believe the Sur 7 only has one. Uh, we have the OcuLink, which is not an option on the B-Link Sur 7. We have HDMI, we have DisplayPort, we have another USB 4 port back here, which the uh, B-Link Sur 7 has as well, but we have two additional USB 3 ports. So that is four total USB 3 ports on here, which for me is huge because I'm a gamer. I like to plug in a wide range of things into my gaming setup. So I like to plug in first and foremost, uh, flash drives, which I always have on hand here. There we go, flash drive. That's gonna take up one port right there. I also bring in a mouse, USB port, uh, powers that as well. I have my keyboard right here. Anytime I'm making any adjustments to my setup, if I'm adding new ROMs in, if I'm updating the BIOS files, which I actually did today because I updated my Botticera to Botticera 39, that's going to take up another port. So right there, I have three ports taken up if I'm working on my retro setup. I also want to bring in a controller. Usually I'll use Bluetooth, which is certainly a possibility here. 
However, I like to use specialty controllers sometimes. If I'm playing N64, which I don't do a whole lot these days, but if I am, I like to bring in an N64 controller. I don't go with wireless because I don't use it enough to really justify you know, spending more money for a wireless option. Uh, also, latency is obviously an issue as well. So I plug in a N64 controller. That's another port used up. So right now we're up to four. That's what we have available on here. With the B-Link Sur 7, we do not have four. So just minor things like that make a big difference for somebody like me in the end. Now, how does this compare in terms of price to a B-Link Sur 7? Well, let me actually give you guys the prices that are available right here, right now on this. Keep in mind, prices do fluctuate. They do change on a regular basis. So I always say that because anytime I post a video or a review, it almost always, you know, ends up being a slightly different price than you know what I talked about in the video because again prices are just up and down constantly so I'm going to give you guys and, and actually I'll take some um, screenshots of this and show it to you guys here on screen too so currently the minis forum elite mini um 780 xtx this guy right here is selling for 769.90 but there's a 145 dollar coupon that you can clip on Amazon you know you don't have to do anything for it you literally just hit clip coupon, and that's going to reduce the price by $145. So after tax and, and you know all that, I'll give you guys the exact price point. Again, this may differ depending on where you are and you know taxes and all that stuff. But for me, $664.58 is the final price for this mini PC right here. Let's compare it over to the B-Link Sur 7. The B-Link Sur 7 currently is selling for $689 even on Amazon with an $80 clipped coupon. Same as what Mini's Forum had to offer there. So at the time of this video, the B-Link Sur 7 is selling for $689 even with an $80 clippable coupon on Amazon. So that brings it down to $609 plus tax. You're looking at $647.67. So what's that? About $17 difference. So you're going to pay $17 more for the Mini's Forum option here. But in my opinion, you have the better cooling, better airflow, and those port offerings here, in addition to the OcuLink in the back, is just absolutely worth, in my opinion, more than $17. So that's going to be the route that I take on here. And I do want to make mention, I'm not in any way affiliated with Mini's Forum. I purchased this myself. I'll actually give you guys a screenshot of my receipt here. I'm going to take off, obviously, um, you know, some of my personal information. So that's not all over the internet, but anytime I review the more expensive options for mini PCs, very rarely do the company send me that stuff. So I actually purchased these myself, same as I did for the B-Link Sur 7, purchased that myself as well. So I can effectively compare them and, you know, make my decision free of any influence from, you know, companies or anything like that. So this is be, this would be the uh, route that I take all day, every day when looking at, the side-by-side -side comparison, not only in price, but also port offerings, cooling, and then performance. They do line up pretty well together, but this inches out ahead in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think in the comments of this video. I'm going to provide you guys with a direct link to this mini PC up here at the top of your screen, as well as in the description of this video. But again, let me know in the comments what you guys think of what this has to offer in terms of gaming performance. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content today, please give me a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.